Hey everybody, welcome back to Gideon Stuff. Today, we're taking a look at the CJRB Mica. Uh, this is a pretty cool little knife. I've been really excited to do this review. It's taken me quite a while, but uh, here we go. Things have been a little bit busy in Gideon Town. You guys will notice that, by popular demand from viewer feedback, uh, we're back to the magazine background, which I think is I think is really, really good. I think it makes things pop, so... And then we'll kind of switch these magazines around as things go by, I imagine. Let's get this over here. Yeah, there we go. That looks good. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this review with a blade length measurement. So our sharpened edge um, is coming in here just a hair over two inches, like just a, just a hair. If we measure the entire blade length, we're just about two and a half inches, right? So this is a tiny, tiny knife. Let's go ahead and illustrate that further with some size comparisons. Here's our rat two. And here's our rat one. There we go. Yeah, small knife. Um, let's go ahead and bring out our Civivi comparisons. There's our Elementum or the Elementum two. And here's a Civivi Praxis. It's a small knife, guys. <laughs> uh, let's bring out our USA Made comparisons. Spyderco PM2 and the Benchmade Bug Out. Good deal. And let's go ahead and compare against some uh, CJRB models that are pretty popular. Go bring out the um, Feldspar, which is one of my favorite models, as you guys know. And here is the frack, a small knife. And let's actually compare this as well against the pyrite because honestly, I thought this was the miniature drop point pyrite when it was first announced, but there it is compared against the regular size pyrite. And here it is against the XL pyrite. And you can see here, there are some differences between the mica and the pyrite. The handle profile is a little bit different. So yeah. It is a different model, but it's very, very, very similar to the Pyrite. Let's also go ahead and compare it against some knives that are more its size. I'm, I'm done embarrassing this guy by comparing him to bigger models. So here it is against the um, Civivi uh, Baby Banter. And here it is against the Civivi Odium. And let's just do a couple more. I know we're taking a long time of size comparisons today, guys, just because it's a small knife. Here's against the CJRB Mylea and the Cold Steel Engage. Mini Engage, Micro Engage, whatever it's called. And last up, let's compare it against a knife that's kind of the opposite end of the spectrum. Here's the Cold Steel Espada XL. I know, this is the most useful comparison you've seen. <laughs> all right, now we've got all that out of the way. What are we looking at here from materials? Aluminum scales, we do have steel liners on the inside, AR RPM blade, uh, AR RPM nine blade, and a steel pocket clip. So let's go ahead and get to the cutting footage. Alrighty guys, this has been a heck of a day for review cutting. I've done three knives today. The third one being the CJRB Mica, and it is getting cold. I'll tell you what, it's getting cold. It was nice and warm and sunshiny when I got here. It's not that way anymore. But let's talk about this awesome little knife. So let's start off with the ergonomics. If I get back here, it's a three finger grip. The jimping up here is really, really good. That helps a lot. Um, but yeah, I can get a good three finger grip here. However, I can fit into that choil up there and get a good four finger grip. Very, very nice, super comfortable for a small knife, right? Small knives aren't always the most comfortable, but this one works, so I like that a whole lot. Um, let's talk about the action. Button lock. Very, very snappy, and look at this. It kind of sucks the blade in. When you push that button, the blade kind of gets sucked all the way back into the scales. That's kind of fun. I like it. Um, the, the thumb studs work really, really great. 
You got little chamfers here going to them. Just a really nice little action. And my fingers are getting cold, but I can still deploy it. So great action. Um, let's go ahead and talk about the carry. So you have a reversible clip, which awesome. Thank you for looking out for the lefties. And this is a shrunk down version of CGRB's regular clip, which is a great clip. Now, I do not have pants that have a fifth pocket on them. I will put in some footage of me putting this knife into a watch pocket. So yeah, I should have worn some of those, but let's go ahead and do it right here. All the way in, smooth aluminum scale, so you know it's gonna be nice and slick. In and out. So yeah, works really nicely. It's a pretty thin knife. It's a small knife. It's gonna carry great. Let's go ahead and do some cutting with it. Uh, this is a tiny blade, so we're not gonna go crazy, but This thing is really nice for detail work. If you want to get in and do some utility cuts like that. Really, really nice. Um, this is not going to be your primary cutter, your primary slicer. But for what it is, it works really, really nicely, in my opinion. And I think it does exactly what it's supposed to do. So there we go. Alrighty, let's go ahead and grab our rope. This is probably gonna be our last rope pull for this section of rope. There we go. Whoops, missed one. Ta-da. And, oh, the sun is not in my favor. We got shadows right now, but let's see what we got here. One, two, three. So yeah. It's a light blade, it's a small blade. Not the best for crunching through rope, but that's okay. You kind of expect that. Now let's go ahead and do our pool noodle. <laughs> We're gonna use this last little sliver of the orange guy. And since this blade is so short, I mean, that's all the sharpened edge we got. We're not gonna make it all the way through, but let's see what we can do. So there we go. Nice and thin. It does feel like it's got good geometry. So yeah, again, short blade, small blade, not do big jobs, <laughs> right? But as far as small blades go, I think this did really, really well. Let's go ahead and get back to the table, shall we? <laughs> it's getting cold. This morning it was, uh, Negative 20 degrees, <sighs> rough, feeding cows on that, rough, I'll tell you what. We had a little uh, goat kid born early this morning and because it was so cold, come out here and he was just froze to the ground. It was negative 20 degrees this morning. And so we had to take him inside, warm him up. No, you stay there, mama. No, I'll get out here. Brought him back to his mom, see if she'll mother up to him. Hate that goat, the one that's his mom. She's an evil little bitch. But, uh, gotta come out here, keep checking on him, see if he's doing okay. We got some food and stuff in him. Probably gonna have to come out here, milk his mom, and feed him from a bottle. What about you, huh? What about you? This goat here is a pet, basically a dog. But oh, I hope the little guy does all right. And it's getting cold again, real cold. And you can always tell when you're gonna have a cold night. If the temperature starts dropping during the daytime and there's not a cloud in the sky, you are in one hell of a cold night. And I can feel it right now, it's gonna get frigid. Alrighty guys, yes, we're talking about the CGRB MICA in today's review. And because this is the MICA, which is a phyllosilicate mineral, 
It's a geology themed thing. I want to talk a little bit about that. And I think this is the best way to demonstrate just what makes micas so unique. Also, yes, that is a dinosaur foot. That's a uh, patasaurine of some kind. So a big sauropod. This is a mica called muscovite. You can see it's falling off of my fingers. Look at that. These thin little sheets that the mineral forms is why we call them phyllosilicates, or it's the defining feature of a phyllosilicate because that's uh, the cleavage that they display because of the way that their uh, crystal structure arranges itself. Alrighty, we are back. So let's go into what I'm liking and not liking about this little knife. Number one, it's called the mica. I love when CJRB does geology themed knives. That's one of the reasons I like them so much. As a geologist, it really stands out to me. When I did the unboxing of this video, I did a whole breakdown of what micas are. They're phyllosilicate minerals. It's a group of minerals. Um, some famous or some popular micas are like muscovite and biotite. But um, I don't actually think I have any mica on the table right now, which is interesting. Um, all these rocks here, these are not going to be here in future videos. I've just, like I said, I've been really, really busy lately. These are things that I'm cleaning up right now. I got some petrified wood. And then I got a chunk of fluorite with lots of barite, some calcite and stuff. I'm cleaning these things up, getting ready to move them somewhere else. Anyways, no micas, but I, I, I'll probably include a little snippet of mica talk in another video. But yeah, I really, really like that. Um, very, very cool. Next thing, the action is fantastic. This is a very snappy little knife. And when you have a knife that's this small, sometimes manipulating it can be a little bit difficult. And especially with these thumb studs, you know, you've got to kind of position the knife just right. And, you know, you don't want to lose your grip on it. But yeah, it pops. Very good little detent. CGRB does a great job with their button lock actions. And when you push the button, it almost sucks the blade in. You see that? It's really cool. It's kind of like an auto retract. Really, really nice. Very, very cool action. Even when I'm holding it like parallel, it kind of swings shut. Yeah, really, really cool. Great action, very smooth, very fidgety. You can get to the thumb studs really well for the reverse flick, which is, I actually think the reverse flick is easier than the thumb flick on this knife, but really, really easy to use. They do give you a little thumb scallop here like on the pyrite that makes access just so much easier. Next up. The ergos on this are actually not bad. So it's aluminum, and I was afraid that that would make it slippery. But honestly, it you can actually get locked in. The jimping up here is pretty grippy. Um, it's fairly sharp. You can get a good grip on that. I can actually choke up into this forward soil area, and I can get a you know a barely four finger grip, but a four finger grip nonetheless. And I feel like I'm really really locked in. Now it is not as good as the ergos on the baby banter. But the Baby Banter has exceptional ergonomics for a small knife. Not very many small knives have these ergos. This is close. This is close, but not quite there. Still, great ergos. The blade is also really, really nice. Very thin, great drop point profile. RPM9 is a steel that I really, really love. And I think this blade works really, really nicely. You have a pretty nice satin finish. On the blade, excuse my wear marks. What is that? Anyways, pretty nice little satin finish on the blade. It's a good looking knife. I like drop point blades. I think this looks really, really cool. So there you go. And just me personally, I haven't handled the mini pyrite yet with the worn cliff blade. I think it looks ugly as sin. It'll probably be a great user. It'll probably be a great fifth pocket carry. Might even be better than this one. I don't know. Haven't reviewed it yet, but I think it looks hideous. So <laughs> that's my thoughts on that. Speaking of looks, I think the overall knife is really attractive. I think the options that you can get these in are really, really cool. Vibrant, vibrant colors on that aluminum. And this is a really, really nice aluminum. It's almost, it's almost sparkly. It's kind of a different finish than like, for example, 
the blue aluminum on this Devo Growler. Focus up camera. It is a different kind of finish, and it's even different from like a Mycincut Serene, which I don't have handy right now. It's just really, really interesting. It feels very premium, in my opinion. Um, ignore all my pocket gunk <laughs> in the button, but very, very nice aluminum. And you can get it in uh, like the green version I thought looked really, really nice. For example, this little pop of color here in the lanyard hole, I think is really, really classy. I've always been a big fan of how CJRB does like pivot colors. They'll, they'll, you know, they used to do a lot more than they do. In fact, most of the recent CJRBs that I've had don't have pivot colors like the, uh, um, maybe it's something with the button locks. Probably something about, you know, fitting a button and the pivot there just makes a pivot color not real feasible. But this is kind of a stand-in for that. And I think it looks really, really classy. It, it kind of pops a little bit and, you know, gives a little bit of a little bit of contrast, gives a little bit of, a little more going on visually. So I think that's really, really cool. Um, I, I guess this also goes into the looks, but I like the way that they're doing their logo on the blade. Small right there, really, really nice. Over there just has a model number and AR RPM 9. So cool. Thumb studs are actually really comfortable too, I forgot to mention that. I also like that this knife does have steel liners. If we look in there, you can see we have steel liners that are completely countersunk into the aluminum scales and they've got a lot of milling, but it does give the knife a nice little weight. Like it's not heavy, obviously, it's a very lightweight knife, but it doesn't feel like a toy. It feels very solid and secure and I like that a whole lot. Um, next up, the pocket clip, it is reversible, lefties rejoice, this is a very lefty friendly knife. And I really like this pocket clip. CGRB's pocket clip is one of the best in the business in my opinion. It's simple, no frills, and it just works. So I think that's it's really, really cool. They made it reversible. And this is exactly like all their other pocket clips, just shrunk down. So yeah, good deal. I don't have any complaints about it. It slides really, really nicely on the aluminum. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Centering, everything from the factory was really, really nice. Overall, just a very compact little package that does a lot of things right. Let's go ahead and get into some of my negatives. The biggest negative is just the size, right? Um, this is gonna be a knife that's not great for people with big hands or people that might have dexterity issues because again, it's a little bit hard to manipulate a knife that is small. Um, this might be a great choice for you if you need to, if, you know, for legal reasons, if you're required to carry a knife under three inches, this is a great option. For me, this was always a fifth pocket carry backup knife. This, you know, I, I wouldn't carry this as my primary, not, not that it wouldn't make a great primary, just I'm a weirdo and I like to carry multiple knives. So this is my fifth pocket carry. But yeah, for people that have big hands or dexterity issues, uh, this is probably not going to be a great choice because it's going to be a little bit harder to manipulate. And honestly, that's really my only complaint. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get into my final conclusions. My final conclusions are that this is an incredibly well-made little knife. This is a fun knife. I really enjoy this knife. I carry it a whole lot. And it's not just a gimmick, right? It's not just, ooh, tiny knife. It's actually a functional tool. And I think that's really, really cool. I think it's beautiful. And for the money, these are, you know, pretty affordable. You're getting the aluminum, the AR RPM 9. You're getting a very premium feeling knife for a budget price. And I think that's really, really solid. Again, if you're not into small knives, this is not for you, right? And so honestly, I think the deciding factor on whether or not I can recommend this to someone is, are you looking for a small knife? If so, here you go. If you're not looking for a small knife, there's no reason to get this one. And I, I must admit, if someone's saying, hey, Gideon, I need a knife that has a blade that's in that two and a half inch range, um, I need it to be my everyday carry EDC. I will probably send you to the banter first just because the ergonomics are superior. I think it's going to be more of a, you know, if this is your one and only pocket knife you're using for everything, I think this one would be a little bit better. But this is also a really cool knife that brings some things to the table that this one doesn't. I do think this knife feels a little more premium because of the aluminum and stuff. 
but this one is probably the better worker. Maybe I'll do a video comparing the two. I think that'd be kind of fun. But as for this little knife here, I really, really like it. If you like what you see, um, I think you'll really enjoy the knife. If you're not into small knives, if you don't really like it, there's no reason to get this one. Go ahead and pass on it. But there we go. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave it a like, comment below, and subscribe. Quick shout out to my channel members. At the cowboy level, we have David Goodridge, Sharpen Blade, and Old Tonto Guy. Thank you guys so much for your support. Um, if you want to support the channel through memberships and get access to perks, click the join button below. You get, um, depending on what level you join at, you get different um, perks, such as emojis, a badge next to your name, and early access to videos and other things like that. You can check it all out below. I really appreciate the memberships. It means a whole lot to me. I will be doing a giveaway to members when we hit eight members. We are four away from that. Uh, when we hit eight members, I will be doing a knife giveaway. You can join at any level to be a part of the giveaway. Giveaways are not exclusive to any level. All members are um, open for the giveaway. So if that's something that you are interested in, definitely check that out. All right, and that's going to be it for me today. Thank you guys again for watching. I've been Gideon. Adios.